All right, so we got a command for this palm. There we go, guys. So if you want to get a vote on the poll, we ended the last stream where I put this poll up. Um, so we didn't get chance for many peeps to get a voting because it was literally the last second of the street when I put this poll up um, So now is your chance. It's been sitting there in in the discord for Since the last stream though, but I don't think many people knew of the poll um, But thank you for the votes everybody loves the green guy, you know, which you know I think that's cool for them to be green the reptiles in general a lot of them so far that we've got as actual characters actually are green um but it's in it's interesting thinking about their color and if that has a if that has an effect on any, the, the reptile law maybe where they're from or where they was born or something i guess it fits with the everbloom forest because it being all greeny and foresty to have the green reptiles it's kind of actually quite fitting um, did you ever fi figure out the pig mask, dude? Um, yeah, well, what it, what we've done so far, I've got two versions. One with the full mask of the pig and one with half mask and the blonde hair like coming out at the back. Um, but I'm using the blonde one, the half mask, as the default right now because I think it looks really cool. But both versions of the assets are there just in case, you know. So when, when he's introduced, we'll get more of an idea on that guy, I guess. But is, when Neffel comes in stream, because that's Neffel's character, you'll see him walking across anyway. He might randomly appear at some point walking across on the screen. Ooh, we're getting the votes. Thanks for voting, guys. Let's zoom in so you all can have a, a proper see of this. Um, there we go. I'll give you a few more minutes just in case. Don't want anyone to miss out. Don't want to have a vote. I'll give you a few more minutes on this poll, guys. Um, don't know if any, if any, the first two will catch up with uh, the green one, but you never know. <laughs> That sounds so cool. Yay, thank you, Kang. I could have sworn I was already in your Discord, but apparently I missed it. Well, no worries. Better late than never, Eld. Feel free to hop on in. Um, I, I wish sometimes I could be more active chatting in my own Discord, but it can be very hard for me to, to do that while working on a game. I tend to turn into a recluse. When I'm off stream, <laughs> that's just me. But we do have some pretty cool channels. Channels we have like a place where you can share your work, adorable pets. I've even got a fan art channel now, guys. Forgot to mention. How could I forget that we have a fan art channel in the Discord? That's the newly added one. Um, so that's if you've done any Raindrop Chronicles fan art. We've already had um, Chubby Cheeks uh, do do some of woody and oliver which are really adorable super sweet and obviously we have uh the polls channel and this is really you gotta be in the discord to vote on the polls because it's the place we do it prevents any che like cheating and stuff doing it on there we used to have a um we used to use websites for polls back in the day the early days but we found that it was very easy for people to you know going incognito and cheat not that anyone did do that but it was there's always a risk isn't it so it's we thought now nah, we'll, we'll do it on discord instead and uh kia thank you so much for that sub nine months nine month streak as well my goodness me thank you so much for that support let's have some hype in chat Rose, quick question before I went on an exam high eaters from the stream. I remember I had legendary raindrop position, but I guess since you updated to those people who who didn't have lost it, so I was just confused how to ask. Um, yeah, so if you're talking about the Discord role, the legendary raindrop, yes, um, that did change as soon as it went from 500 to 1,000. That means that it all got completely wiped and 
the the folks that have a thousand and above have, have got the role now so um yeah the legendary raindrop discord role will always be tied to the amount of raindrops that it is currently to be a character in the game even if that changes again in the future um it'll be tied to that but of course the folks of you that have ca that did have characters when it was on 500 raindrops that's still fine you still got your characters that's no worries at all um but uh, but yay so You'll get the you'll get a role, the role in Discord if you ever do get the 1k again, no worries. I re I gave it to two more people last stream because they reached the 1k again, so <laughs> um Okie Dike. So hope you're doing well, Kia though. I hope you're having a good day. Thank you for that sub again. And thank you for joining the Discord Elves. I'll say hi to you and then we'll close the poll, I think. Yay, thank you for joining. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to give you guys a few minutes because of how late the poll got put up last stream, but I'll give you another couple of minutes, guys, but it will be closing very soon. Um, so let me just give an explanation of this guy before we close it. So um, if you've looked at the Law Bible, folks, let me, let me go on the Law Bible just very quickly. Also, this is uh, this is the painting animation thing that we're working on, which we will be putting into RPG Maker today. Kind of already done it a little bit off stream, but we're a little bit only a bit halfway there at the moment. Okay, so this is our law bible, guys. I think we've got um, a command. Yeah. Um, so if you want to like get up to date on the story and stuff this is the place to go um the story is kind of on the website as well but that will slowly be taken off the website and put on here instead um over time because the website's gonna have a complete new content uh like change and update over the coming over the coming months we've already got the faq page up now which was which was a cool thing I'm glad that's there but yeah anything that's story character or you know will building it'll all be put on to here from now on and I'm gonna make sure this is very much uh, like linked on the website too I was thinking of like doing a like a sort of banner for it and um, link, link having it shown off on the website that way with a link so you guys can easily get to it um, but yeah, so we're, we're here right now. Yeah, we're here. And this is what this whole painting shenanigans is about. Um, the very last part of the second main quest with the scene with the fruits. So we recently did finish that scene with the fruits. Um, it's over in the scene discussion channel, actually. So if you do want to have a little you watch that scene, you feel free to, guys. Um, we've had National Mars give a bit of feedback, which I think was very, very cool. And um, so there'll be a couple of like tiny little dialogue edits with that. Um, I think that we'll do at some point too. Um, and yeah, so we we still got the boss battle that we're working on. But it's honestly been very, very advanced mechanically to get get sorted and there was a couple of like troubleshooting issues because of the ambitious things we had planned with that boss um but i have managed to do a bit of research um i went on the forums and uh though i kind of am sort of working out how to do that now but it's so technical and advanced that i'm i'm not kind of doing it on stream right now while i'm still like getting my head around it but at some point um we'll we'll revisit that when when it's a little bit sorted out a bit more and in the meantime we'll be working on the cutscene stuff because it's a little bit a little bit less a uh, little bit less technical hi ray how are you doing hi nungi as well how are you guys doing good morning to you guys 
Yes, Ray do. I, I gave you the legendary raindrop roll, by the way, because I noticed that you hit the 1,000 again. So, huzzah. DJ. You are a legendary raindrop again. <laughs> Nine valleys away from 50. Oh, GG, Kia, that's that's a real achievement. Talking about special follow numbers, guys. I'm going to have to... Kia's, Kia mentioned this, so it's like tri it's triggered this for me. Um, Raindrop RPG, that's it. Look how close we are. 200 followers on our raindrop rpg account folks so who wants to be the 100th follower <laughs> i mean it's it's pretty cool if we can hit the 100 i mean i'm personally very proud of that if we do because i haven't like followed anybody for follow to get follows more easily i'm literally only following two accounts on here um which is uh, the rpg maker official twitter and um one of the artists that we're using for our stuff so yeah we i kind of don't really follow anyone on here um but oh what is this we have notifications i see <laughs> and uh yay thank you for the follow whoever that was because i'm pretty sure someone followed but i don't know who it is yet we'll have to have a look let me have a look on my phone. How are you today? I'm doing a uh, better raging. Definitely happy to be back to streaming again. It was me. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And hi, Fantasia. How are you doing? Nice emote, by the way. Nice emote. Um, appreciate that follow. Super cool. You're the, you're the 100th follower. That's super awesome. 100 followers special. Hey, that feels super cool now. We have a th I was going to say a thousand. No, we're not a thousand just yet. We've got a hundred. And that is a, that's, a, that's a good feeling. So, GG, guys. Thank you, everybody else that has followed, who follows that account as well. Because you, you helped us reach that special landmark. Um... Yay, I think we should have some hype in chat from that, personally. Yay! Yay, 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 yay. Okay. Okie doke. So, yes, we are working on the scene straight after that boss battle. So, although we haven't finished the boss battle properly yet in terms of getting it all working 100%, um we will return to that we are working on the scene that comes after it um as because i think it's going to be a shortest scene it's not going to be too difficult to do so i think it'll be a nice thing to get done it is one of the tasks in our trello so as soon as we've done that we can pop that into the done section then because uh that is the final scene of main quest 2 at that point um, my main quest 2 has been a pretty 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 uh it's cutscene heavy quest uh and that's that's uh good i like that uh right so so i think i've written it here as well because i was gonna i was gonna kind of expand with you guys like an idea of how this scene could come to life but basically the main thing that does happen in the scene is um that Rose paints the picture she started painting just before the fruits interrupted them. And it's a portrait of this guy. Where is he? So, yeah, it's a portrait of this guy. And we're just deciding what colour he should be. Um, because he's a character. We haven't made this character yet. And we know nothing about him. He's unknown. But we, we know a few things about him in terms of how he's, how he's been shaped so far by the story we've put together. We And it's all here. We all know he's the one that hijacked the wagon and kidnapped Carol. The Barrel's family. And the one that Rose also bit as well. Which is all, all explained in this uh, little article here about the hijacking of the wagon. 
Um, so, so he, we know a bit about him. We even have thought about having a bringing a cute baby reptile at some point because just because it's adorable and chat like the sound of it. So that will likely be happening. Um, so whatever colour this guy is, or probably colour is baby as well. And, um, okay. So I think I think we've got a winner, guys. I think we've had this poll open long enough now. So I'm gonna get this back on the view, print screen it, put it in paint, and save it so that we've got a record of this poll and the results. Give me a mo, folks, while I say this poll. I have a, a poll folder somewhere and it's hiding. How are the music levels anyway, guys? Because uh, Because I'm using a different way to play music now the sound levels might be different so if let me know if it's too quiet or too loud or just right um i think it i did test it and i think it's okay but i'm not 100 percent sure Okay, so that poll is now saved. Guys, I'm gonna be deleting it now. So the one that won was the green one, which is very interesting. Like, it, it wasn't done on purpose, but because he's green and because um, Careless Rex's reptile is also green. I, I think the he's is a little bit of a darker shade of green. They're both gonna be based in the Everbloom Forest, you know, it's uh, maybe maybe that's coincidence. It'll be interesting to talk about reptile lore and think of all the reasons for why they might be a certain colour. Cause I always like to think really in depth like that. Um, you are your overall gain level is a bit quiet, but your relative levels are good. Once I adjusted my volume up. Oh right, okay. So when you say my gain level, do you mean my mic or just the music in the background, just for clar clarification? Because I, I can turn up the background music just a little touch if you guys think it's quiet. I do like to not have it like blaringly loud because I want you guys to hear me more, but I still want you to hear the, the, the nice music that's playing. <laughs> I've turned it up just a, like a smidge, a tiny smidge. Um, I will accept a hundred dollars for being the hundred follower if I was rich. Hi D Wills, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. I really tried to imagine the other colours, but the green stood out for to me as the only option. Yeah, I'm super curious if those that you that voted green, what was the reason? Is it because you feel like it fits because of the Everbloom Forest being very sort of green in colour scheme too because the blue i think the other ones look great but they might suit being reptiles from different like biomes and things like a blue reptile maybe more in a sort of a, a, like a very water sort of based location and the orange ones maybe more deserty i don't know it's, it's something to consider. It would make sense. Um, music may be a little quite competitive, but it's personal preference at that point. Okay. Yeah, I'll have a play around, guys. I'll probably have to listen back to the VODs at the end of stream and maybe we'll get, we'll get the perfect balance of music and mic over a 
over the course of the the streams i've had a little mess around just but if there's ever if i if i sound too quiet or the music's too loud just give me a shout don't don't be afraid to do that because uh um i've just like messed about with them and i'm wondering if it's too much i've lowered my mic just a bit and raise the speakers a bit so if that it has changed it too much just let me know um spot on with the colors and locations rose yeah hi van how are you doing it's good to see you i think most of the people chose the green more than the others just because most of the people associate reptiles with the color green yeah that's a, a true point as well that's a fair point as well um I mean, I'd adore to bring in lots of different coloured reptiles throughout the game, but uh, yeah, different ones might suit being from different areas for sure. I'm de I definitely can understand why you picked the green, guys. I think it's a good choice. Um, so thanks for the vibes, folks. Okay, so now that we know who our reptile is, we've got some stuff to do. Okay, so this red reptile, in case anyone's curious why we've got a red reptile here, <laughs> it's because Rose paints with her blood in one branch of the story because she doesn't have access to any paints. So she only has her blood to work with. But in another branch of the story, Rose does have, have access to more paints and that'll allow her to do the full colour version of the reptile as he should look. So, um, we can get rid of these guys now. Um, and what we'll do is we'll do the green one we'll do all the animation frames for this guy and he looks he looks a lot nicer now he looks um a bit more um three-dimensional not so flat anymore because before he that was what he looked like he was unfinished but we in the last stream we worked on making him look a little bit more detailed and thanks to van van helped guide me making uh the best the best pixel art possible i think it's pretty close to perfect now the music is clear now and you're you're still a good clean 10 db of the music yay by the way my stuff's coll collaborated and i actually have a spec spectacle analyzer hooked to up to my work computer so i'm looking at the levels as well as hearing them that's fantastic i'm glad that it's sounding good so it's, it's good to hear thanks for letting me know out and being super helpful okay so i think we've got all all of that right so um we got to just slowly work backwards and make a green version of this current red one. And then we'll have two image files, the red one and the green one, depending on um, what version of the story you guys end up getting. So I'm going to open RPG Maker as well, because I actually did start to animate this within the engine. So we'll look at that too. Um... So here it is. We'll just do a quick test play to see how it's looking. Yeah, music's muted. So the green one won. It did, Fan. It won the pile. We, I kept it open for about uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, before it got closed because I wanted peeps to get a chance to get the votes in but green did win by a fair few a fair few votes and uh, I'm happy with that choice I think they all looked pretty adorable um and green green's fitting it's fitting for the everbloom forest and the location and um and the look of where we are so it, i i kind of really at some point it's probably a little bit early right now but at some point think about reptile lore a bit more and 
why reptiles are certain colours and get that same stone. Just it's just like little extra details about the world and and things rather than just have all oh, that reptiles just brown because it is with no reason. <laughs> and that reptile's green just because it is. I, right now the first thought that's come into my head is the ones that are green were born in the forests and have like sort of got used to that environment and um, over over the over centuries and evolved to, to that whereas brown orangey reptiles would be more deserty based and um, blue ones would be water ones but if anyone else has got any cool ideas I'm up for hearing those as well um, here we go. So I think this is the side. We've got so many side files now. I guess uh, <laughs> get confused by which one's what. So right now, this this little section is literally our test play area, guys. Um, the, this the apple fruit um, transports us to the boss, and this little smoke asset just sm transports us to the latest scene that we're putting together to see how it all works. I heard, what was that then? I heard like some voice come out of my uh, earphones and I was wondering what it was. But <laughs> I might have been hearing things. Oh, I know what it was. It was Van Subbing. That's what it was, wasn't it? Thank you so much for the th for three months sub history. Cause I what was that noise? <laughs> I heard it was the sub the whole time. The text to speech. Thank you so much. Let's have some hype in chat. <laughs> I appreciate that. Appreciate the support and the love. Okay, so as you can see, I mean, it's more squished on your end, guys, because of the test play being in the overlay. Um, but you can still see it, and she's painting it. Um, it might be a little on the slow side, though. So I'm wondering if the frames... You know, Creative Cloud has really been a book face lately. Um, I think you guys saw that pop up for you as well because I had my display capture up then. Every, like, I'm not kidding you, every few minutes I'm getting it pop up all the time. And it's like, go away. And I've even logged out. I logged out to stop it from happening. I've even got task manager to shut it down i've even disabled notifications in the settings but it's still doing it and it <laughs> it's getting very uh distracting getting that pop all pop up all the time um maybe there's a section for turning that off in my window system section I'm going to just turn off all the notifications that I'll do. There we go. Maybe that'll help. But it might not. Oh yeah. So, it took a bit of thinking to ha how to get that animation working, guys, because uh, some of you might know that with RPG Maker, you can't really animate in the software. Not anything like super advanced anyway. It's very, very basic with how, what you can do in terms of animation. So I, I have to use hacks to get around things, to get my vision and how we want it to look. So I, in the end, I decided to use a script with a wet 90 frame weight in between each uh, script which what that script does is set the certain frame um, to what it should be so it's pretty simple really you, I just needed to find the script to what the actual script was and once I got it it was easy peasy but I think 90 frames is a bit much probably we'll do it on 60 maybe 60 will still be a bit much right now it's taking Rose absolutely forever to do this painting 
so I've changed the 90 to 60 so it'll be a bit faster now and we'll do another test play And Rose does need to move a bit closer to the easel as well in this particular scene. Cool. Okay, so she's painting him and it's all working. I mean, I think it could we could have it a little bit a bit less of a gap in between each frame change actually, but it depends how I suppose it depends how like quick we want to see her paint it. I suppose this the way in between the frames adds to the intensity of watching but we'll see. Um, I feel like Kat, because Carol's going to obviously be in this scene, we've got to position Carol and the hero properly and uh, they might be saying stuff while Rose is doing this as well so we could always think of uh, some conversation that could be happening while Rose is doing the painting. Um, but yeah, at the, on the, in this particular version, she's doing the red one because she's only got her blood. This would have been the version of if you let the fruits escape. So, well, the green one, when you see him as he actually does look, that's the version when you let the fruits. Um, oh no, I got it the other way around, I apologise. If you let the fruits escape, you'll you'll only have rose's blood you won't have the palettes but if you d kill them you will because if they do escape they'll take their paintbrushes and palettes with them but if you kill them they'll leave them behind so that's the reason why um and it, it'll just potentially affect how the next main quest plays out carol will likely be a lot more aggressive to other reptiles if she doesn't know that it's real colour, because she'll be, she could easily just accuse any reptile she sees, because Carol is pretty, is very, she's a sun tire, that's what she's like. Um, but uh, if if we know that it's a green reptile and it has blue eyes, I think it has blue eyes, isn't it? Then Carol's not going to just accuse any reptile. She's going to, she's going to. Uh, be a bit more careful. she's gonna know who it is but then that brings in the question of well what other reptiles and what the colored reptiles are actually here living in the cave because are they gonna be all green ones are we gonna troll carol and have just all green reptiles and they look so alike that we don't know who's the real one or will there be lots of different colored reptiles and will it be easy to find the one who it's the painting of um because you know we don't we don't have to restrict the reptiles to just being green ones just because we're living in a forest they could there could have been others that migrated here and stuff i mean chub cheeks is, is a purple reptile so he's obviously migrated here um okay so i mean where would purple reptiles be from actually that's what i'm wondering now where would that where would they have uh, um sort of uh formed that purple scaly I'm trying to think of a fitting biome from where purple reptiles could be from but i can't think of one right now <laughs> okay so we can see that it's working anyway and creative cloud is still doing that silly pop-up i really feel like uninstalling the whole thing <laughs> but obviously i can't because i have like a few there's a few apps that I actually have on Creative Cloud, but there's a few that I don't. So, but, hmm. Weird, because it's only just suddenly started doing that today. Right. So, there's a few things we could do when it comes to making this scene. Um, let's get 
get it all summed up on our Draw.io page. Okay, so here it is. I'm just stroking my PC because she's being a noisy PC. I think Creative Cloud is upsetting her. Yeah, my, my PC's a girl. But yeah, it's my, my PC is being massively loud right now. But we good. Stream's not lagging or giving us any problems, I don't think. Okay, so. So this is where the previous scene ended. The battle has begun and uh, it'll then end. And then, as soon as the battle's finished, this is what we, we're going to think of what's going to happen next. Um, I mean, it's still very much open of what's going to actually happen in the battle, in narratively, in terms of dialogue boxes that might happen. Because we know we're going to get that pop-up of, are we going to kill the fruits or are we going to keep them alive? That's obviously a search that will be there. But whether there'll be other dialogue to accompany that choice, we don't know at this point. This is all, we can all decide together what we think could be the best thing to do. Um, and uh, passing Trav, how are you doing? Title caught my attention, how far into the story are you? Hi, thank you for stopping by, it's good to meet you. We, we're pretty early on. I mean, as you can see, we're, we, we're on stream 150 nine is it yeah i think it's stream 159 so it sounds like a lot but it really isn't we like literally just touching the tip of the iceberg with this story we we're working on episode one because it's episodic this game is and uh, we we sort of about to come to the third main quest of the game so uh, we yeah we're very 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 early on it's uh very sly very slow gradual thing um we have we have a law bible so if you want to have a look at that you can totally have a nose eh um oh one thing i did do and i feel like i should uh, do, add this as a command to stream especially for people like who are new here and popping in for the first time so they can see the links to everything um but i do have i mean i do have a law but like either link so and you can see the websites but so feel free to look at that if you'd like to too but thanks for stopping by and if you've got any questions feel free to ask me i'll be happy to answer i'm a bit back and forth what are we doing right now we're gonna just get this scene this cut scene where rose does the paint and we're gonna we're gonna aim to get it completely decided what exactly is gonna happen and occur in that scene I imagine it being a short scene, but you know, it's going to contain more than just Rose doing a painting, isn't it? So there's going to be Carol dialogue and who knows, maybe a, um, a choice with the hero as well in that scene, but we don't know. Um, but we know that there's going to be two ways that the scene's going to go based on the choice. So if you kill the fruits, they'll obviously be dead and not in the scene anymore. So the fruits are gone. So I'm going to I'm going to just literally write like a sort of short sentence summary of of um maybe what this what the scene could look like and what could be happening in the scene if depending on what choice you pick so we'll just 
click enter a bit there so that's out of the way for a sec um, could the story thus far be summed up in a couple of sentences? Well, we actually do have... We have a story so far video. That's a couple of minutes long. So... Um, so, yeah. So, that's a bit more than a couple of sentences. But we also, for you guys that prefer reading to watching videos, we have... We sort of have a summary of what happens in each quest but if you're curious about the actual premise of the game more than the story so far then probably this would sum that up best um so yeah there's videos there's a little bible there's like all of it that works for me thanks yay yeah the story so far the videos is definitely something i'm gonna be doing and keep doing with every single um, little update you get because then it's not too difficult for me to do that um, they're short and sweet and the one for episode two has already been written up so I'm gonna just narrate the thing um, we and have like sort of clips to accompany it um, and once we've actually done this scene this scene that we're working on now because it's the right the bit right at the end that will mean I can release a new story so far video soon been waiting a long time for that one um so that's another reason we want to get this scene done so we can get the next story so of our video released fantasia has all the cutest emotes okay so the fruits have gone in in that one um, so if you kept the fruits alive, if you killed the fruits, just so we can make it a bit more clear, um, So if you kill the fruits, I'm imagining, now this is just me and how I'm imagining it, but um, chat, like if there's ever, if there's a, a sort of vision that you guys imagine as well, don't don't be afraid to, to say, because we want this to be as awesome as possible. So, right, so I'm imagining the fruits are gone. Maybe there is fruit residue is residue the right word Splos, splatter splatter on the ground because that would make things very sad wouldn't it that was fruit sort splatter on the ground that would be heartbreaking to be quite honest but <laughs> just you know that visual indicator that they're gone and they're dead rather than just the other option is to just have nothing there and have it be invisible but you know where would they have gone like disappeared into thin air so i kind of imagine that maybe there is residue splatter on the ground just for that extra like kind of yeah this is what you did you killed them i hope you feel bad about it now or is that too heavy-handed but yeah it depends how it's done i guess um thank you king for that follow i appreciate that welcome to the stream does the vampire girl seem agreeable enough to team with or is she shady that's what's so interesting isn't it passing traveler because it's very she's a mysterious character um right now like she doesn't talk so what's going on in her head we don't know could be literally anything she could be super nice and wanting to help and being super agreeable and doing everything she can to make sure the party are happy and be seeking validation from them so she gets accepted could easily be that or she could have like an agenda we don't know because the mystery of the fact that she doesn't speak allows us to not 
know much about this character and what her intentions really are. Um, I mean, people are wary of her and scared of her, understandably so, because she's a dangerous vampire, but she, that could definitely be a misunderstood thing, because uh, she seems to show empathy and remorse from what we've seen of her so far. So we kind of are just making our own minds up about her at the moment, but a lot is very, we keep a lot very much out up in the open when it comes to characters and the story so that we can sort of brainstorm together all the possibilities and eventually pick the most awesome one for our story. Um, so if you, if you kill the fruits, all the fruits are gone, but if you kept them alive, um, the fruits now national mars actually sort of had a really really sort of charming um sort of a way they felt that this scene could unfold if you did keep them alive um he they said that they could use the basket as a boat and sort of hop down into the river below because this scene the previous scene is it serpent's fault let's have a look at the previous map yes it's a river so it could very much make sense if they escaped by dropping in the river on in their basket and sort of using it as a boat we 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 likely won't see them actually using it as a boat i mean don't get me wrong that actually would be a really cool scene to see um but we could if we want to take it in the most simplest way possible we just see them hop into the basket and just drop down and assume assumably they would have dropped down and landed in the river and sort of floated off sort of thing i mean i've i have considered like how will in this game will we from characters that aren't our current point of view how will that work final fantasy 9 had a really good way of doing that i felt like you could kind of it would pop up sh naming a sort of cutscene. it had a cutscene title and then you'd watch it and then it would show those characters and what they were doing at that exact time that was an interesting way that one game handled that whereas other games just cut into it anyway without the option some would do the fruit is sentient it is there's a lot of sentient objects in our game it's sort of a very key theme of uh, our game um, and the lore of this world and what we built and it was all just very much by chance because um, just one day someone in the community like had the idea for having a <laughs> sentient barrel and it was it was it was very random because it was from a typo but then we were like hang on that would actually be quite funny so then we did it and no regrets at all i think there's always the, a very there's always a possibility to make some really quirky characters that way rather than just a boring human <laughs> um okay so back to to this so the fruits jump back into their basket and jump off the cliff I'll say I don't want to use jump twice I'll say that and jump off the cliff using the presumably using the their basket as a boat jump off the cliff into the river below presumably using their basket as a boat so that's a very logical way that scene could unfold for their escape because i can't imagine any other sort of effective escape routes for these fruits if i'm quite honest I mean, they could just jump down there and run off, but it's less cute and less charming than them using their basket as a boat. And 
they're very attached to their basket. It makes sense for them to want to leave with their basket. Um, so. Now. If you killed them, the paints and pallets are going to be left behind. But if you keep them alive, they take them with them. And that is why we get Rose only has her. She, she, if she has no uh, paintbrushes, she can only paint with her blood. So Rose can only use her own blood to paint the painting. Rose can use many colours. Okay, so we're expanding on Rose a bit more. I'd say right now she's agreeable and wants to be accepted and wants a place to belong. That's kind of very much how it's sort of shaping right now, but it doesn't mean that will be how it is. You know, twists and turns sometimes you can think certain things but that's not how it is it's it, i still like to consider the alternative too but it's more likely going to be the fact that she she wants to be accepted but only in capitals Oh yeah, so one thing that I always want to make sure of when it comes to choices in our game is that those choices actually do have a diff make a difference and not just be there for the sake of a choice that's not really a choice because that can be a bit annoying <laughs> in games. So I think it's a nice touch to actually have this as a as a sort of. A, obvious first um, consequence from either of these choices but there's going to be many more over time we listed them all on another document somewhere so we've got some ideas okay so now how was Carol what was the last thing Carol the Barrel said now this this dialogue line, not this dialogue line, this one. No, this one. Sorry. Um, National Mars. Where is it? Because I thought this was a, a very interesting point in the Discord. National says that we don't know that Apple's good, which is true. Like, although he has seemed like he's got the good intentions at the bunch, we we've only spoken to him for like two minutes. We don't know that it's good. So, um, there was a particular dialogue line. Which one was it? So, that you're better than this one that was it yeah i agree that we can have a better line than that because it's assuming you know we don't know that it's better than them we could keep it just short and sweet like that but we can always add, like think of something else to add if we want but for now, I'll just delete what we had there. Um, but Carol the Barrel, I'm trying to think of what she was thinking. So she was pretty much 
scared too because the fruits were threatening her as well. Um, they were threatening to turn her into an easel. <laughs> so she's going to be quite happy if they're dead, I'd say. Um, she didn't make very good friends with them at all. So... But she'd probably be quite happy if they run away as well. Because at least they're gone and they're not threatening her anymore. I'm wondering if the fruits would say anything as they hop into their basket. Um, I, could Im I couldn't imagine them saying nothing. They might potentially make a threat and be like, you haven't seen the last of us or something like that. Um, to kind of tell us as the player, you're you making this decision might actually come back to haunt you, sort of thing. Um, let me get the document up that we had the possibilities of what things could happen from keeping them alive because I want to be reminded of that. Okay, so if you let them live, the pros of letting them live were no guilty conscience, gives the fruits a chance to redeem themselves, but the cons of letting them live is you don't get loot and you risk like full being conquered in the future because that's what they were going to do. So they could easily say something like, you haven't seen The Last of Us yet, or it's a sort of line like that, because that's that would kind of fit with that and that possibility. And we said that that might not happen. It all depends on other things that you do um, between this point and the end of episode one, if, if that would happen. Everything kind of has to like for, for the fruits to be able to achieve their goal of risking makeful everything has to fit for them to be able to do that we know that they need vampire blood to be able to even do that so even if they're kept alive they won't be able to do that unless they have a vampire or find a vampire to sacrifice in place of rose and that might happen and if it does like fall screwed because they'll be they'll be able to finally do it but if they don't ever get another vampire then they won't be able to do it so it all depends everything has to sort of you know happen for the fruits and for every, all the pieces have to fall into place for them um, and hi Mia, welcome back. Ooh, 137. If you had another three there, that would say lead. <laughs> I need to talk more, let me wait for streams. Can they have a weird traditated speech patterns? Like it's hard for them to speak English. We be back in future. You know, seen the last of fruit ones. Interesting, because we have we've kind of given each of the fruits a voice if we have a little look um certain fruits um have different like voices to kind of distinguish them from each other so they all don't sound the same and blueberry was the one that was the he was definitely the one that couldn't speak words he kind of would end up um like using little puns in place of words because he, he's a child and an, infants can't really put words together um plum was a more intellectual and could lemon was stoic and very sort of no nonsense sort of person um tomato was a teenage emo boy so they've kind of all got their own voices going there so yeah just thinking of what I mean, it could just be one of the fruits that could pop up and say something like that. But yeah, I imagine that, that they would say that you, you've not seen the last of, of, of us or we'd be back in the future. Anything like that would be great. Um, okay, so I'm going to just put a few ideas there for what they could say. 
And yeah, Mia, if you're sleeping, you don't, no, no worries at all. You need to get your rest. I know that you're a night owl like me, so it, it would only ma make sense for you to be asleep in, in the day. Um, and to hop into that basket could say something like, um, saying, uh, So it all depends who, which fruit we decide to do the speaking and then we'll be able to get the, the right tone. Um, but something like that, any kind of line that sort of is of that wording I'd say. So, um, and I think that'd be cool to kind of like make us worry about regretting picking that decision. Um, but if you kill them, you get all some loot. Uh, okay, so we've got a description of what's going to happen, but I guess it's thinking of dialogue in between that now. In all honesty, and then we can start putting the scene together and getting it finished. Um, So yeah, that's that's the whole scene summary. I feel like Carol definitely needs to say something. Um, and it might be different depending on what option it was. But I think at this point, thinking of Carol, she'd just be desperate for Rose to do this painting because all that's all she cares about I even did this thing I went into like full detail and did this for the scene but it made me realize a lot of things so Carol realizes she needs Rose though it's ent entirely for salvage reasons it's still a step up from not caring at all about what happens to Rose so Carol starts becoming a little nicer to Rose but not more much okay yeah I saw this little grid thing on a on a website and there was a couple of YouTube videos on it as well. And apparently it's a really effective way to to get into the the deep layers of the story that you don't always see um, in the beginning. The bit well the layers of a certain scene, should I say. And it kind of yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, what matters about this scene is the whole the whole Carol and Rose sort of dynamic more than anything rather than the fruits. The fruits were just sort of a filler, I guess, of what was really of the main, the main purpose of this scene. I'd say filler, but they're not a filler because they're going to be very key to what's going to be happening in the game. I'm um, okay, so... Yeah, I'm not going to think too much of dialogue yet. I mean, I'm very, if we if we think of any ideas, that's great. And I'll, I'll put a box or something, like make some dialogue box notes, um, just roughly. Um, but I'll put the actual scene together without dialogue, first of all. Um, but... Go back to Photoshop. Okay, so we go to the green boy. We need to make sure that we, if that this one's working as well. Um, 
and it's easy it's pretty easy to do like we just have to set up a, a variable and whatever choice is picked will be will be uh be that so okay so now this um got to get rid of the extra detail so yeah I'm just gonna do the green version and on all these frames and we'll get that in RPG maker and then we will do the actual scene hi poo And then that'll be like that'll be it in terms of cut scene work um, until we start the new content, main quest three onwards, and side quests and stuff. And I probably want to get the first playable build out before we start the new content, just so that we've got something playable there of what we've already done so far. Um, and it's very, very tempting to just do new content, you know, very tempting because it's always very exciting thinking of the stuff to come, but you gotta be careful because if you do too much new stuff and don't finish the old stuff, you end up with a massive list of things to do and yeah, that's not good. So I'm, I'm kind of discipline, disciplining myself to strictly focus on what we're currently doing. And the most challenging thing of, of all the unfinished things so far and all the loose ends we need to tap it, it's literally that boss battle with the fruits because it's pretty ambitious but if if I do it, if I do it then I'm going to feel really cool because it'll be like super crazy level stuff that you can't really do in RPG make that I've managed to do. Um, so that'll be an achievement. Um, but yeah, I definitely need some time, maybe um, the weekend and that to see where we are with that battle. What an adorable emote that is. What a cutie pie. You guys have all the best emotes. I have to say, I really like the sub gift in feature on twitch because i'm randomly getting sub gifted i got a random sub gift to mia's channel i don't know if you knew mia but look i'm gonna share my emails with you that of yours just randomly popped up and i was like oh my goodness i got some mirror emails so it's always really nice to just get some cute emails all of a sudden um Okay, so there we go. I think that one's done. So we're slowly making him less and less detailed. We're going backwards with this artwork. Um, so Trying to figure out the difference. Yeah, I think what it is is that, that it's like a darker colour green. Probably a bit too dark that. Skip. 
Yelly Cat, thank you so much for that follow. Welcome to the stream. Are we having a wonderful week so far? Okay, I think that is good. Because the eyebrows are a little bit less obvious on that. This one. Okay. Oh, the horns as well are less detailed. It's very weird how you have to do the same frame three times, but it's how the engine works. I'm good, you. I'm doing fantastic. I'm glad that you're doing good. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to our nerdy RPG hangout place. Do you like RPGs too? I think most of us here love them, don't we? There might be the odd few that I only come here for my accent, that hate RPGs, but most people love them. Okay, I think there's one little thing that... The shadow isn't as detailed on this animation frame so Okay, so now it's the... Oh, yeah, we still have the... I mean, there might be an easier way of recolouring this at this point now that we've got rid of the... Now we've done the hard bits, so... What we could do... So we've only got how many colours are in this? I think that there, that's all like virtually one colour. Yeah, this is going to be easier now. So I'm going to just... I think it's the same colour. Let's just check. Oh, it's a little bit, a little tad darker. So I'm just trying to work out what colour for that frame is on here so we can at least get the accurate version for the green one the colour code. Okay, so it's that particular shade there. Cool. So, if I just grab that one. Yep, 
Yeah, so if I untick the contig, is it contiguous? Is that that's pronounced? There's a little box in Photoshop. Um, contiguous. <laughs> I don't know if I'll say that. But if it's unticked, then it'll colour all of them in at once. So that saves a bunch of time. Whereas if it if it is ticked and it only it only colours one, so if I untick it, it does that. That's much easier. Um. Yeah, and it should colour in the whole outline as well. It's just the eyes of the horns now. Oh yeah, the um... Just those two tiny bits. Okay, so that was easy. Didn't have to do them one at a time. <laughs> Yay. Shortcuts are good. Okay, so. Right, so now that they're both done, I'm gonna make sure that we save this version as well. So I'm gonna call this one easel. Easel two, <laughs> yeah. Easel two, and that one can be easel one. Okay, so we've got both versions. The only thing is though, at the start, like Rose actually paints a, a few a few parts of this, I think up to here. She paints up to here before the boss fight. And at that point we won't know which easel it is that um you know, because we don't know what choice is being made in the battle. So I'm trying to think we should just use maybe a neutral colour at that point. Hi Rose. We'll Your hard work is looking great. Oracle, oh my goodness. Thank you so much for that five months. My goodness me, thank you so much. Let's have some hype in chat for that sub. Thank you very much. I hope you're having a, a great day, Oracle. How are things going on your end? And your hard work is looking great. Thank you very much, Oracle. We're getting this cut, we're getting this scene finalised and once this scene is done, it's going to be great because we can do the next story so far video. Um, this is the, the one last part that is stopping us from getting it done because it's the final part of the second main quest. Um, so, it's a pretty short and sweet one. It's a pretty short and sweet um, cutscene. Much shorter than the other two scenes that are actually in this quest. But it's still an important one. So, and if anyone want, hasn't seen the first story so far video yet, yeah, it's there, guys. Um, my goodness, those were the days when, when we did when I did that. Things were a lot more simple in the game. We didn't e we didn't have any of the barrels in the game at that point, apart from Carol. We didn't have any of her companions. We had none of the lore. We didn't even have the fruits. Everything was a lot more simple back then. But it was it was fun 
It's fun to see how it's shaping up. Things are good, just started my summer vacation, enjoying loads of sleep, LOL. Yay, sleep. Yeah, make sure you, you sleep. Sleep is good. Sleep is necessary. I couldn't sleep much um, yesterday because of construction work. So I'm feeling a little bit, you know, not well rested because of that. Because it was really loud. It woke me up. It made me get a headache. But um, after last night's sleep, I feel a little bit better. But I hope you have a lovely vacation, or I could have got any plans. Okay, so, hmm. What I'm thinking of doing is. Because, yeah, we got a red outline and a green outline, and um, I think we should just have a black or grey outline until we get to the more detailed section then obviously it'll turn into a the proper colour outline so just to keep it more neutral seeing as we don't know what choice or, or a easel will be used at that stage so um, hmm. if we If we untick contiguous, no, oh, no, that doesn't do a good job because it highlights all of it. Um, oh, I know, I know what we can do. If we just do that, I need to find a nice neutral grey colour that's a, that's a similar darkness level to that one, to this one. I, I think there's probably an easier way to do that but I can't think. Juliet, how are you doing? Okay, I'm back. What are we doing now? We're uh, making sure that the green painting is also done so that we can set up the variable in RPG Maker for whatever the choice is made so we get Rose doing the right painting in this next part of the scene but there's a lot of things to think about, like in terms of how the scene's gonna go. I've kind of wrote a summary of how that scene is gonna go, um, depending on the choice you make. But there's a lot of gaps, you know, that could be filled in, um, in those. Like we haven't considered dialogue. Uh, let's just put this a little bit closer together. We haven't considered like, what Carol would say or what the hero might say. Rose obviously wouldn't say anything. Um, but we considered what the fruits might say. We said something like, if you kept them alive, they'd kind of make a threat about being back. We've not seen the last of them. That's kind of something they could say as a first idea. Um, and obviously if they're dead, that's it. We can just get straight into painting the painting. Um, well, I imagine it'll, it won't be a very long cutscene. The fruits will either make their exit if you've kept them alive and then Carol will sort of push Rose to do the painting. So if Carol is going to have any dialogue, I imagine it being, well, hurry then, go on, carry on. Like something like, get going, Rose. Because Carol's super impatient like that. And that's all she cares about. She's just like, hurry up. Um, and then Rose will do the painting and then they'll have the reaction to the reptile, that's true. The fact is it's a reptile and there needs to be some sort of reaction to that. Like, what does Carol know about reptiles currently? Are they a sort of race that she's familiar with? We have absolutely no clue because we haven't developed that lore yet. Um, we know that she hates, she calls humans flashbacks. Um, we have some insult words for reptiles actually let me get those up because I think it, it might be a good point to just look I've got a doc somewhere a community member ID is here on this doc um, this is any anything you you guys say that's super 
super cool i tend to add it all here so that i've got record of it and we don't ever forget um no real plans i was going to japan but stinking virus is stopping me so i guess i will settle to um for going to marry old england who's who's that rise surely that <laughs> but oh my goodness japan sounds good and that that's very frustrating in all honesty because um the virus is it is annoying because there's things i want to do that i can't as well <laughs> hi Andy cake how are you doing yeah you got me there uh, oracle didn't expect that <laughs> um okay so i think these swear swear words curses are all at the bottom here it is okay so for some reason the dark theme is like really like messed up the colors on it but i think i hope we can see it let's zoom in a bit sorry took a quick shower welcome back mia i hope it was a good shower what did we miss we're kind of just rambling in all honesty about how this scene's going to unfold and there's a few things to consider i suppose we can list potential questions um how would the party this is what a question that springs to my head how would the party react to the poor the painting of the reptile um how does carol feel about reptiles um because carol's the only party member we've got like well she's not really a party member but you know she's with us on our journey she's the only person who talks at this point in time like rose is mute so she can't say anything the hero only talks when there's a choice to make in the game um so if anyone's gonna say anything it would be carol um at the end of the day, when Rose has done the painting, nobody's going to just not say anything. There's going to be some kind of reaction. Um, but it's very much unknown what that reaction is because we haven't even considered yet how Carol feels about reptiles. Does she like them more than humans? Um, does she hate them just as much as humans because they're still not part of her barrel kin? Um, would she still call them flesh bags or would she call them something else? This is all very interesting. Um, here are some swear swears we've got. And yeah, because we've got the dark mode on, the, the tech looks a bit dark, but I think hopefully we can make it out. I can just about read it. Um, did you see the stream me and Rexy did? Um, yeah, I was lurking me out. It was loads of fun. What were you playing? What was it called? Bunny Man or something? Yeah. It looks like a really funny game. I hope you had fun. No, I'm stuck. I will be doing some reading and continuing to work on my novel. Oh, what's the novel about? Super Bunny Man. Yeah, did you have fun? I'd be rubbish at that game. I can just imagine. Hardest to have laugh recently. Oh, that's really nice. We all need those times where we can laugh because the world, the world is a butt face right now. So we need those times. But yeah, if anyone's gonna make you you laugh, it's gonna be Rex for sure. He's the person that does that. True Baldy, how are you doing? It's good to see you. How are you doing, True Baldy? I hope you're having a good week. I'm doing decently. I'm getting back into the routine and swing of things. To have uh, been a little, had a couple the last couple of streams off due to in RL thingies, thingamajiggies. But now we're getting back into things. Always doing fine when visiting your stream. Yay! Well, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you for being nice, guys. 
There's a lot of negativity in the world right now, so we need, uh, we all need to hear the nice things. Okay, so I'm looking for reptile insults in this list right now because what I'm thinking is because we've got how would the party react to the pain of the reptile, how would Carol, how does Carol feel about reptiles? Um, you know, she could potentially have her own curse word for reptiles. She hate them too. Would she hate them? Well, hate's a strong word, isn't it? Hate's a very strong word. Would she dislike them? Well, the fact is, she's going to hate this guy because he's kidnapped her family. So, even if she did like the reptiles, I think she would not like this guy. My, my gut instinct is that Carol would feel the same way about reptiles and humans. But I'm up for a debate with this. I, I'm up to hear any people in chat who thinks Carol would be in love with reptiles. But that might be a bit strong. I don't feel that Carol would be in love with anybody. Um, but she's going to say something. I imagine her being like, oh, that that flesh bag. But obviously not flesh bag because that's her word for humans. So I'm thinking of would she have a, a curse word for a reptile? Because I could imagine her definitely shouting some sort of curse word when she sees that the painting is a reptile you know she's gonna freak out just imagine just put yourself in the situation you have found out who murdered your loved one well it's not murdered but you found out the person who's done some harm against someone you love you get and you you finally find out their identity and see a picture of them you're gonna have a reaction. So it's kind of putting us in the, that kind of mindset now of what that reaction's gonna be. Um, anyone else hype for tomorrow? I mean E3. E3's tomorrow, oh my goodness. I'm really like not knowing what's happening in the world right now. I've gotta get with it. Is that really happening? My goodness me. I hope they have some good games. And it is a high fantasy novel. It is coming of age story of a young boy, girl and girl twins and their struggle to overcome an evil and ancient spell that has changed society. Ooh, that sounds fun, honestly. I wanna, I wanna know more about it. Feel free to, are you sharing it online or is it a private thing you're doing, Oracle? Sounds fun though. Oh my goodness, True Ball did a fill red raindrops. You mean in the top 50 on the whole leaderboard? How does that feel? Does it feel badass? I hope so. It's a private thing. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I wanted to be nosy and read it. Sounds fun. Yay, welcome, King. Now Van's showing off their raindrops. I made it up to, to 23. <laughs> Let's see how many I've got again because, oh my goodness. So I'm not even the top rank still, guys. I'm not even the top rank of our stream yet. And I'm the streamer. That just shows how hard it is to grow in raindrops here. <laughs> 160, no, 1,668 more, I'm going to be a Leviathan, guys. I don't think we can get more OP than a Leviathan, can we? Because everything in regards to the ranks here is water-themed, obviously. Rain, you know, it has to be water-themed. So, we couldn't, Leviathan was clearly the most OP water-themed thing that could exist, right? That's the highest rank of the stream. And it, it helps that it's actually a Final Fantasy themed summon monster thing. Because then it just makes it like, the fact it's a living being makes it more OP. Hurricane. 
I suppose that's kind of similar to the rank that's underneath Leviathan. What was that again? Tsunami. Hurricanes are a windy sort of thing. I think tsunami. Yeah. I, I mean, I would totally add more ranks, guys, but I can't. I don't think there could be anything more OP than a living water monster. Oh, hey. Hi. Um, hi, Zayas. Zayas, Zayas, how you doing? I would toss the Kraken into the list. Oh, yeah. A Kraken. Well, maybe we can add that as another one. We're going to go on forever with these ranks at this rate. Interesting. You know, I'm thinking of putting Kraken as the, the rank that's Leviathan currently and then put Leviathan above that. And now, uh, what what would be more? Uh, what sounds more badass? Because Kraken could go above Leviathan, but I'm I'm wondering if whether Leviathan's more badass or not. Um, Kraken versus Leviathan could be an epic wrestling match. Yeah, it's just thinking who's the most badass, you know? I suppose. <laughs> Leviathan is no longer so it wins. 73 pages in if i publish it i will send it you that's that's really cool how many pages do you think you'll have all together and the e3 thing is the xbox showcase you're waited really patiently for halo infinite ga gameplay oh right okay so it's just xbox then and i'm very like behind when it comes to what's happening in, in regards to that sort of thing lately. Yuna, how are you doing? Welcome. What are those characters at the bottom of the screen? Ooh, um, Yuna, these characters at the bottom of the screen are the characters that are in our game. Um, we have a section on our Discord that, that has their like character sheets and stuff as well. Um, I think there's a command on it, so exclamation mark character. Yeah, once you've got a thousand round drops, you can be a character in the game. So once you once you are a character in the game, you'll also be there. So that's what those characters are. Um, more syllables equals more epica. It is looking to be between 250 to 300 pages. Oh, well, I hope you get it published. That'd be freaking awesome. But yeah, it's the perfect time to, to work on something like that while, the, the, while there's a pandemic for sure. And oh, I see, sounds nice. Yeah, look how cute they all are. Super cute, is, aren't they, all these characters? <laughs> okay, so, reptile swear words. Okay, we're looking at reptile swear words. Scales, filthy scales. Scale skin. Lizard lips. <laughs> Lizard lips, where's that even come from? Um, scales is actually a great name to refer to the reptile race. Why is, why is that there? I'll be, I'll be, I've got to take a massive deagle. Why <laughs> is that even on that, our list? <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, I think that scale skin or scales kind of fit as good reptile swear words. Looking at that list of things that we've got anyway. But how would how would we like fit that in naturally without it sounding forced? I mean, Carol could exclaim something like, it, it's, a, "It's a scale skin," or "It's one of those scale skins," or something like that. Something like that. Let's. Uh, I'm up for suggestions. I know, why was that in my curse list thing? And if anyone has any more curse li words, by the way, feel free to suggest and I'll add them to the list as well. Because we could go on forever with words like this. It's always good. I'm a big fan of fictional 
things like that, like very cute curse words, because then, you know, nobody gets offended except for the people in the game. Like, scale skin to the reptiles is probably the most, like, horrible thing they can be called. Who knows? Cold bloods. Ooh, interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually make a list here. We might because we're on top it right now. Cold bloods. Okay, so she would, well, I imagine her um, shouting a curse word, reptile relate to curse word when she sees the painting and so for you guys that haven't seen the painting yet and you don't know what it looks like let me just remind you all so you know she's gonna see that and be like what the hell? How dare they take my family? How dare they take my son? I've got to show Carol Sunday a moment here. Really, she has to go off on one. She has to really go off on one. I'd love her to go off on one, but getting in a Sunday a sort of head is very challenging because I'm such a... Sp I'm very sweet, so <laughs> can be challenging, but it's it, it would be awesome if we did. Um, Sci-fi is very good at making up new curses. I oh, interesting. Well, yeah, feel free to share any interesting curse made up words, videos, articles, or whatever, because I'm very much for getting for learning about all that sort of stuff. Tongue breathers, let's get them all in, guys. Thanks for all your ideas. Wow, we're getting quite a few. Eye lickers. My goodness, guys. Snake. Snake breath. Sliver thing fingers. Oh my god, we've got so many. You guys are the most creative ever. <laughs> like, we could totally go for any of these, but I imagine... Because Carol usually has her own exclusive curse words because it really like makes her personality shine when we give her her own. But I could imagine um, other like NPCs have having a few of these as well. But Carol will probably have will pick one out of the bunch for Carol herself exclusively to her um, spear polisher. <laughs> Makes more sense having the sort of hyphen there in between, I suppose, doesn't it? Are we like it looking for curses aimed at the reptiles or aimed by them? Um, said right at them, as in like, for example, Carol's just found out a reptile has stolen her family, kidnapped them, and she, this is going to be, she's going to have a reaction. She's going to see this reptile loose who like took her family away and she's gonna get mad and angry so she's gonna shout some reptile related curse where she's gonna give them all horrible names under the sun in because the anger's just gonna bubble up inside her right now and she's not gonna be able to hold it back so i think what what it is is aimed at the reptiles that's what what we're trying to get at here if, if i think if i'm getting that right spineless fork tongued 
You definitely do have a penchant for writing. I can see why you're writing a novel. Because you've come up with some pretty cool words for us here, Oracle. Um, fork tongued. Spineless, just spineless on its own. I suppose it could work as a sort of a, an adjective like in an in, in in some kind of uh, context in some sentences that could work if another word goes after it i just had my brain start cranking out a good list for them and the other way warm blood sweat out round tooth round die yeah oh you mean for the other way so when you say by them you mean reptiles how they talk to humans i assume or other races because i feel like we could totally make um I would be happy to make a text, a list for those too. Just, it, it, even though it's not like something we're doing right in this scene right now, it will come in handy for the next quest when we meet reptiles. Because we will be meeting some soon and we'll want some insults ready for then. So if we think of, um, what size text is that, 50? So I'm going to reword this differently just so we, we get you guys get some clarity or anyone just popping in gets some clarity. So um, words, curse, insults that humans say to reptiles. Well, it, it's not necessarily just humans. It can be any race or other races say to reptiles. And uh, we'll do the same for, for this one. It's not letting me ha get this text box. So curse, insults, that we'll get more listed. But reptiles, say to humans. I kind of wanted to put it side by side so we can see them together. So... I'm going to just enter that so we've got some room. Um, like that, I better say pin reptile species would be freaked out by a species that leaks liquid from its skin. <laughs> Eggborn or even egg. Eggers, Eggborn's a good one and Eggers good too. Like I could imagine a more intellectual person saying Eggborn and like a, like a you know, a random NPC who isn't so intellectual saying Gaga. So both work great. <laughs> I lo I really like those. Very, very, uh, very good ones. Um, birthless, clear lid, unborn. So make sure, guys, if you are giving some suggestions that you make clear which ones are the ones to humans and which ones are the ones to reptiles because I might accidentally put them in the wrong ones when I when I don't think I sometimes do that. Um, oh, oh yeah, big big text. There we go. Egg suckers. Becky Chambers has a great sci-fi series called Wayfarers that had some great interaction between reptile species and humans. Oh, thank you for the uh, for that mention, Kingfisher. I'll look into that one as a bit of inspiration. Um, I'll make a, a quick note of that as well so I don't forget. All of those are aimed at reptiles. Awesome. Okay, cool. But... Uh, you did mention some, I think, so I'll scroll back up to make sure we get those one in, those in too. But my goodness, we've had quite a few. You guys are the most productive ever. Unborn, birthless, clear lid. <laughs> okay, egg suckers. <laughs> These are funny. There we go. I can see us putting a, I can see a, 
me putting a poll up for some of these. We might have to shortlist them now because we're only allowed 10 on a poll um, in Discord. Um, but uh, it doesn't mean we'll get rid of the others. They could always come in handy another time. I'll pick the ones that feel most relevant for the for uh, Everbloom Forest area and uh, um, Carol. Um, I guess we're good at Im imagery racism. Not sure how I feel about that. Lol. Also, that could reference how the reptile's genitals are covered depending on the PG rating. Oh, which one would reference? how their genitals are covered and as for pg right writing it's very much up in the air right now um originally this game was going to be pg 13 um and uh there might be some things though that go over that you know because there's going to be violence and i don't want to limit myself i don't want to have to feel restricted with how far i can how far we can go in terms of themes that we that we do talk about and having our game um so i i have says i don't want like real life curse words in our game i'd rather stick to fictional curse words simply because it's just more creative and amusing and uh be better for the tone of our game to do that i think um, I don't think it would make sense, for example, if say one of the fruits said the F word. It just wouldn't sound right or come right, be right coming from them. Um, but in terms of violence, you know, we, we might go far if we wanted to. And as for um, um, the other side of things, the nudity, um, we, are, we have a romance system in our game. And um, I'm, I want to be quite ambitious with it. There's, there is going to be a brothel in our game, um, but we don't know how far that's going to go. You know, we, we might like have it as a PG-13 style brothel where you don't actually see any nudity or anything like that. But we might decide, sod it, we'll just do it. It all depends on how we're feeling and how, how we really want the vision of the game to go when we get to that point. Um, and uh, aimed at the reptiles nutless <laughs> oh my god flat cock oh my god is there an is there a like of sort of uh i'm trying to think if i have to word this like for the word penis is there a good like non planet earth word we could choose like it'd be really cool if we made like a word like that like our own word for that that would fit great rather than use actual actually use our words um and um aimed at the mammals dangler pelt the hanger flag wave your tent maker you you're really good at this we'll get them down oh my <laughs> just remember laugh seeing it seeing it right out there um insult for humans pig born dry skins milk suckers soft skins nipples oh my goodness guys i don't want to make i want to make sure we don't miss any of these so let's get them all down um okay so i know that there was some more up above so i'm gonna quickly just scroll up above so we don't miss those um so warm blood was one <laughs> Round two, round tooth definitely fits because I've got spiky teeth. So, <laughs> okay. So, um, if I have missed any further up, feel free to say because I don't want to any really good ones to go amiss. But um, aimed at the reptiles, nutless. I mean. Yeah, we know what nuts are, don't we, really? <laughs> okay, plank. What's... Okay, some of these I'm, I want to get the context of more because they sound interesting, but... Um, 
aimed at mammals. Okay, so. Turn my head for five minutes, I come back to this, lol. <laughs> flesh bags, yeah, flesh bags is Carol's famous word for humans. She uses it a lot. It's been in our dialogue a lot and I love it. I think it's perfect for Carol. And I wanna find the, per one of these will be the perfect reptile insult that Carol could use as well. I think, I think that ultimately needs to be decided because that's what she's gonna say. She's gonna call him a certain c curse word when she sees this painting. Um, and I'll just quickly, Insults for humans, pig born, dry skins, milk suckers, soft skins, nipplers. I mean, there's so many good words here and I guess it's thinking of, I could definitely imagine certain factions, certain races exclusively having these words for themselves like for example the reptiles might call you know humans one thing and fairies and canines might call humans another thing um flat tooth for mammals okay we got to get the mammal one in haven't we because we haven't done that yet so Insults and aimed at mammals. some plant where I'm at reptiles since they probably have a plant over there oh yeah so that needs to they need to be moved to this thanks for correcting me because I had a feeling I might accidentally put the, some of them in the wrong section okay since they probably have a plate over their groin. Yeah, well, we've got um, a reptile walking across the screen right now. I think he's just wearing an, a normal human outfit. Um, but, you know, different reptiles will have different sort of outfits and depending on what, what they do. Okay, so... Um, I remember seeing on Tumblr earlier a post on mammals being weird compared to reptiles and mammals and that seems like a good source on ins on insults. Hi Met as well, don't know if I says hi, I'm just reading what you're saying without saying hi. Um, but I want to see that Tumblr post as well, I'm, I'm curious now. Hi Lotte, happy birthday. I mean, if you if you want followers, in all honesty, the best thing to do is just be yourself and stream some content. And if people like what you do, they'll come and follow you. You don't have to do it by uh, begging. It's probably not as effective, in all honesty. Um, I'm using mammal instead of human, since we're kind of a specific subgroup that would have more cultural insult instead of specific biological ones. Okay. Cool. So, so um, what we'll do in that case is I'll put mammals there, and then I'll merge these two together. Because I had into in my head that the mammals were the beast races, but I see that you mean both. It could even be humans or mammals. If I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, um, hair chasers. 
Which one, where, which one would the hair tracer be? Just because I've, I've done a brain melt. Um, I was referring to reptiles that have a set of scales that overlap their reproductive hair, so it won't. Oh, right, I get it now, yeah. I thought you meant a physical plate armour then. <laughs> but yeah, I, I get it now, you explain. Um, I figured a reptile might insult a cat person sometime. You were correct on the mammal thing, yay. Okay, so, yeah, for sure. I can imagine the reptiles would be very uh, nasty to many of the races. The cats, the humans, would they even get on with any of them? I mean, I say the reptiles would be nasty, but, you know... Some reptiles are probably lovely. They're not all going to be villains or horrible people. Like you get, you get a, uh, you get evil in all races, and I think uh, that's definitely important as well. Um, but yeah, it's, there's definitely going to be hostility between certain races, and we know that the humans and reptiles are hostile with each other. There's a question mark on the relationships between other factions right now as they haven't been introduced in the game yet but for sure there'll be levels of friendliness and hostility between each of these races and it'll be fun to decide that together insult for a human call cool. okay let's get them in and we we cannot just put all these in together i think um Could insult the ears, lack of them as well, drawing a blank on that aspect though. Well, let's have a look at, let's have a look at the picture of our reptile, see if it gets the creative juices flowing. So, they've got ears but pointy ears and they have spikes, so something spike related could work. Who knows? But scales is definitely a key one. Um, and now, now we've got a good list because we've got a really good list here, guys. And it's going to be really handy to re refer to this when we when we're trying to think of what insults they're going to say. But Carol, in particular, in this scene, is going to be the one shouting the first reptile related curse word of the game it'll probably be the curse word that sticks with carol forever when it comes to reptiles just like flesh bag for humans um and i'm trying to think which of these would suit being said by carol and i'm gonna have we got carol's uh icon because i could easily get a visual sort of idea better if we do that uh, where are we <laughs> there's so much on this uh sheet that i can never find where we are here, here we go so i've got carol's icon because we're going to just use it to put it next to the words that we could imagine Carol saying. All of these words could end up being used eventually, but I imagine specific NPCs and specific races and specific factions would use some more over the other. Um, um, Carol, the sort of one she would be, would be the most aggressive sounding, probably. Something that sounds very sunday -er out of all these insults. That one could work. Something that just sounds really ag aggressive and... Egg sucker sounds very aggressive and it's a very carol-like word. Snake breath could be a carol-like word as well. But feel free to, if you guys can imagine Carol saying one of these more, then feel free to say. I'll probably pick a view that she'd say and put up a poll or something. I think we've definitely got time to get a poll in. 
Um, the best insults are multi-layered, adjective, verbing, descriptor, example, three-legged goat, loving son of a dog. Yeah, so. Yeah. That's, in, that's interesting looking at it from that way. So the adjective in that would be three-legged. Goat loving is the verb and son of a dog is the descriptor. Cool. I'm going to make a note of that as well. And um, I mean, if any of these could be combined into something that goes with that sort of uh, way of wording it, then yeah, we, should, we could totally try doing that. Snake faces could be a carol like one. Depends on the character though. How eloquent is she? Also, adjective verb is also a good pattern. Yeah, I agree for sure. Like when it comes to um, every character has their own voice, don't they? Their own way of speaking. And Carol's very blunt, very straightforward, very to the point. She doesn't hold back. She'll just say it without thinking of what hurts people's feelings. So, which is why I'm I'm marking the the very uh aggressive sounding ones with a carol icon um like if we look at some of her dialogue in this scene have we got we've got some examples of how she tends to talk but she's very yeah, like, I'm going to squash you, you, you spoiled little squirt, she calls the tomato. She's just mad all the time. She's just always mad. <laughs> Typical Sunday. Um, cruncher, oi, son of a bucket. She's, she's very, she likes using her descriptive words. And I could imagine her being a bit of a... Someone that curses a lot, for sure. She doesn't hold back. But yeah, flashbacks is her word for human. She calls the hero a flashback all the time. Um, so something that complements flashback would kind of be nice for her, the reptile that word that she'd use. Fork tongued something similar. Yeah, Carol could say, I could imagine that too. There's, there was another one as well. Tongue breathers, um, eye lickers maybe more. So yeah, the very, the descriptive ones, like, you know, the ones that sound really gross and mean. <laughs> the ones that Carol would use. Hairless egg sucker. Oh my goodness me. Yeah, because they don't have hair. That's a good, good way of seeing it. So, um, let's... Uh, can never find the scroll bar on this program because it's all camouflaged. Okay, so. So hair, hairless is a great word, an adjective to put in front of an insult. Um, did, did we have them together, those words? Um, or if you have a good word substitution, um, you could use the in word version of yeah yeah we don't have a substitute for the f word do we yet guys i don't think we have we were thinking of like some very like carol tends to use some real life minor insult words 
she she called Rouse a dork, for example. Um, and uh, my, my, the minor sort of words like that are totally fine for Carol to use too sometimes, but it all depends if there's if there's no if it fits, you know. So we we picked dork because there wasn't a better word to go there really for Rose in that particular context of how the scene played out. Um, I'm gonna lurk while I get a snack and make some orange cinnamon tea. Oh, sounds really yummy. Orange cinnamon tea is a good one. Also, how do reptiles spawn? Do they go through a limbless phase like platogs, frog, tadpoles, legless, belly walker, slither skin? Ooh, see, this is really fascinating because all this is to, still to be decided, um, Al. Like, when it comes to the law of the reptiles, it's so basic right now. We don't know much about them at all other than the fact that they have a conflict with humans and resent humans um, we don't know how they were how they are born how they give birth or anything like that it hasn't even been discussed so it's really great and, and interesting that you're bringing it up because all this sort of thing is what really helps develop the law further so it's definitely something to consider and uh I guess that's what we need to think about like obviously they differ to humans with how how that all, that goes and I I could see it going that way what about you chat I mean eggs I I love the egg words that we've got here egg born and egg ass so if that's the case they they are definitely they are born from eggs it would work for reptiles um to be born that way rather than born like as humans are um and i guess it just all depends it's it's up for discussion i guess and up for decision um but we should get those words in as well Slither skin's a good one too. It's kind of similar to the scale skin one. Yeah, the world building one help give you more ammo for the rude bits, but it can go the other way as well. Yeah, it's it's interesting how it's fictional curse words that have actually got us to consider this topic because it's it's not even popped into our heads yet to to think of how reptiles are born and reproduce and how all that process goes it's not even been on the agenda at this at this stage but it's very it's very cool and it's very very much something that we should consider um and i was thinking something similar to the mating bulls that cobras do being born from eggs wouldn't they wouldn't really have parents if there was a mating frenzy okay see i'm a reptile noob i need to learn more about animals and things like that um but yeah i'm gonna make notes of this because then i can actually do my research after stream as well um which can add more cultural differences yeah and all this sort of stuff as well like the fact that it's so different how they're born and all of this that we're talking about now it it kind of makes sense why there's such a why humans and reptiles don't see eye to eye i mean i don't agree because personally i think so what like you know you can be happy together and live in harmony but some people can't get past their prejudice and the differences between them um so yeah, the fact that if this is the case, they're born they're born from uh, eggs and they're not at all anything like humans, even though they're humanoid. Um, I'm also thinking about snake pics. You could go in that direction as well. Oh, snake pits! I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I'm 
okay now this because i don't want to forget any like terms you guys bring up um i mean they're kind of similar i mean different but i'm trying to think of other video games now like i know skyrim have aragonians but is the Scar is the Elder Scrolls lore that deep that there's a backstory on the Aragonians and that? Like, I don't even know. I haven't read into it. But I guess they're sort of similar, our reptiles to them, being as they're humanoid reptiles. Um, but it's, it's very fascinating. I think it's very, very much something to consider. I think it can add a lot of depth to our story and world if we think about things like this rather than just not even have an explanation at all. Okay. So are there any on this list that would majorly clash with each other? Because it looks like we're kind of shaping the reptiles now and how they've evolved and how they're, they've been born and their history a little bit more but have we are there any here that might clash like like we can't have belly walker if we've got that one for example because um i cannot think off the top of my head but you guys might spot because i'm got my brain melt <laughs> and oh some snakes actually have um so that could add another element from that side. Red pelt, heat, stink, etc. Interesting. Interesting. Mammals can see, smell them, but reptiles would feel and taste. Yeah, that's very, very cool to consider because... Uh, when reptiles finally do enter the game and you know we have things go down with them we have interactions you know we got it we got to get into their heads and their minds and the, their way of living and we got to realize that they're not humans and they they're different so all these things that you're mentioning like the senses are very important as well because otherwise we could end up accidentally writing dialogue that is like treating the reptiles as if they're humans and so it's it's good that we're considering this early i mean i say that but the reptiles will be in the game within the next quest or so so it's not too early but it's before we've actually introduced them properly okay so we've got a few that might be like carol any others here that you think could be appropriate to carol guys i mean we've got hairless egg sucker but hairless snake face hairless eye liquor hairless snake breath hairless fork tongue tail i think hairless egg sucker and hairless eye liquor fit the best for that particular adjective the others don't have quite the same ring to them there we go found it yay thank you matt i'll say that as well I, I accidentally opened it and it's going to open my other internet browser now interesting i'll read that properly at some point um and yeah, being able to detect the heat of warm-blooded creature or taste them instead of smelling would definitely change how they described things. Yeah, there's definitely a lot for me to, to get reading on and learn about here. So, in the meantime, I might... I might... Uh, yeah okay um 
I think I like eye li liquor better than egg liquor or egg sucker. Yeah, we need to think of what ones we like most. And I think I think putting up a poll would be a, a cool thing because then we know that we, we're going to get the best reptile curse word for Carol. But the ones that don't win, like I said, other people, other NPCs and other races will say them if it's relevant. Like, I love the egg born and egg ones, but maybe they'll be... For certain, you know, the like fall NPCs might stay those, you never know. Can Carol would be more inclined to call them an eye licker or something. Um, and they're good swimmers. Oh yeah, in Skyrim, the, the lizards there could stay underwater forever, couldn't they, I think. So that's that's actually true. And Mr. Box Phones, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good day. So that's an interesting one, and considering we have like a river, and it's kind of water, there's a, there is water in the Everbloom Forest. They could hop in for a swim if they wanted. Because <laughs> um, yes, we we do have a, a plenty of water in this area. Okay. Um, so are there any others that could be good for Carol? I mean, I love some of the others. It might not fit with hairless as much. I mean, it's funny that Carol would call someone hairless when she's hairless herself. So I don't know about that. But I could, a human probably could. I mean, that would be very hypocritical of Carol, wouldn't it? To, <laughs> to call a reptile a hairless egg so come she's hairless. She's not got a single hair on her wood, wooden self. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i could imagine humans saying hairless like something and carol being like well i'm hairless this stupid flesh bag and just get really offended because she's also hairless um um how vulgar is carol she's very vulgar but in a in a sort of like fictional vulgar way if that makes sense like the words that she says like flesh bag for example although that that's very mild in our language it's it's probably very derogatory in the world of raindrop chronicles so so for the people living here in this world she's vulgar um she doesn't hold back she'll just say things um because i licker seems derogatory but not vulgar yeah i i say she'd be both probably um noseless instead of hairless yeah do would you would we say the reptiles are noseless i mean they don't have a nose like a human does i guess but they have a nose to a degree it's just like longer um um, did you know snakes can feel or sense vibrations underground? Can they? Interesting, because we have a, a, an, an underground sort of cave area in our, as a as a sort of area where our reptiles live, funnily enough. Um, I'm going to say that as well in research do a bit of googling about these things because you never know could be something that would work for the story uh, okay so we've got yeah the others probably don't sound as aggressive as the ones that i've marked with carol Eggs or cat eye lick liquor. Yeah, so some someone I mean we could just go for I'm trying to think of it. A dialogue like a line she'd use now um 
I mean, we could always put, like you say, another descriptive word in front of whatever one wins the poll or whatever one we go with. Um, and hairless is a great one, but maybe not for Carol, seeing as she does know her. <laughs> I mean, it would be fun, eh, if she said it, but yeah, that would make her a hypocrite. Um... This pits on their nose to help taste the air and sense heat. I appreciate all you reptile pros in chat right now today. We've learned a lot and we've, uh, we've got a few good things uh, that I've made now of top here today. They'll come in handy. Um... So, I imagine Carol shouting a reptile related curse word when she sees the painting. So, something like. I just move these down a bit so we've got some space to put. Oh no, I've just realised doing that has kind of shifted everything, damn it. Um, yeah, it's, it's changed the position of what it should be for Carol. Let's just go back to what it was. <laughs> there we go. Um, if we're going to do the dialogue, then we'll have to do it in another text box. Let me now. I'm gonna draw I was getting on the nerves. <laughs> Rose, oh hi bell sandwich. You've walked in on me getting salty over draw dot io or diagrams.net or whatever this program is called. How are you doing? It's good to see you. It has been a long time. How have you been? Hope you're good. Humans could get called rot eater or scavenger if other races don't eat aged foods as much. Um, oh, okay. Well, would humans eat aged food? That's the question. We know with they've been eating fruits, we know that because that's why the fruits are mad at them. Um, but yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's uh, I, I like rot eater and scavenger as as nasty curse insult words for sure. Who knows? Maybe it would. Uh, suit a specific faction of people more but it's good to put them there anyway just so we've got them um like wow cheese you can summon that mild grows oh yeah that's true it's true as well you're okay salt is fine sometimes can't be helped. I've been a little stressy lately, mostly just from work, but just doing okay. I was hoping to change to working in a bakery um, sometime in the next month or two. Ooh, well that sounds nice. A bakery, you're gonna eat all the, the cakes? I would. If I worked in a bakery, I'd eat, I'd eat everything. <laughs> Actually, catching a stream is like a sun mini nostalgia. Yeah, well, it's lovely to have you stop in, as always. I'm always glad to see your name pop up. 
We can eat preserved meat or dried meat. Okay. Well, thanks for your ideas, guys. I think we've got some really cool... We've got some really cool ideas. We've been really thinking in depth, which is really cool as well. Or like more in depth than I'd have even ever considered, which is great because it, it inspires me to take things further with our law and world building as well, and not just have it be like super simple. Um, even if only from being around a lot, like six to twelve months ago, yeah. I'm glad that I'm I'm glad that things you will hopefully get better. But yeah, the bakery sounds super awesome. There are a lot of good ideas. Yay! Don't know if that counts nostalgia, but still, it does. It definitely does. But I I'm honoured that you, that my stream nostalgia to you. That's that means I must have sent a a good memory in your mind. So I'm glad. <laughs> You motivated me to geek out. It's good. It's fun to be able to do that without having people's eyes gloss over. Yeah. That's good. I like motivating people. Community peeps are usually pretty good for ideas. Yeah. So super good. We've had all these cool curse words, guys. It's been awesome. So I'm thinking, I'm going to think now, I'm literally going to think directly what sort of dialogue Carol will say in fact let's copy her dialogue box we need to think of the best possible um way she's gonna freak out over seeing this reptile so she's gonna she's gonna see this reptile that rose has painted this reptile right here she knows now who the person is that kidnapped her family. So she, we've got a, we've got a real opportunity here to to really show Carol's personality if we wish. So um, so we had a hairless egg sucker, but of course uh, Carol's hairless herself. So she she's got so. So, so right, so it would have probably been something like that. So Carol, also we'll put in brackets the action just so we know, sees the reptile rose has painted. So, I mean, nothing wrong with her saying hairless, but she's so, sort of insulting herself, isn't she? Um, so we could also have eye liquors was another. I mean, we can always we can always uh, word it differently as well. She could be like, Is whatever approach you want to take with how she we, we've got a, an opportunity here to to really shape things so ultimately we get to decide Carol's relationship with reptiles at this point okay and thank you mr. box fans thank for the follow I appreciate it I just thought of another one for the reptiles to aim at mammals, Mother Splitter. Oh my god. That sounds very, <laughs> very like, it's great. But yes, I like it. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty violent when you think about it. But, you know, in, I'm not going to hold back from from being that descriptive. I think it's cool. 
and I like I like dialogue to make an impression so <laughs> Carolyn Sauce hi Rose how are you hi National how are you doing it's good to see you we're doing good what we we're kind of shaping the the scene because as you know guys we've got one more scene left in this main quest too now and uh, this is going to close it all up it's going to wrap things up before the group head back to Lakefall and um, in a in a summary we've got we've got kind of the summary going here the the fruit once the fruits are dealt with uh rose paints the painting of a reptile and then carol's reaction happens carol is obviously going to react because you know her family were taken by this person so she's gonna get very mad and um right now all, all I can think of is Carol is like says an insult, a reptile related insult. So um, she could even be like, it's one of those hairless egg suckers, and like go re get really mad and jump around and throw a tantrum, or she could be like, not one of those hairless eyelids because I, I see a bee more like the first, in all honesty. Um, But yeah, it's it's where everyone are taking next. It could we could completely end things at that point and be like, let's go back to Lake Fall and ask anyone if they recognise this reptile, this uh, egg sucker, um, or eye liquor or whatever word we want to use for Carol's insult. Um, we haven't decided yet, or we could um, we could use the opportunity to to find it to ask some questions or i mean i feel like we'd learn that anyway when we get back to the village and in the next quest um i mean there's the opportunity for the hero to ask something at this point rose can't say anything she she's mute so it makes it more challenging to think of a interaction when only one character can actually talk here in this group properly um and the same in insults used for vampires can be used on reptiles it's a bit mean on them both do you have any insults the race is do you have any that insult the race is cooking no, we, we haven't really. I mean, we've been thinking about uh, how reptiles are born. Um, eggs. Um, El Eldoral said some really interesting things about... Uh, um, let's scroll back up in chat. Like how they spawned. They go through a limbless phase, like frogs and tadpoles. Um like when they're babies i mean we're going to be having a baby reptile introduced to the game we have no idea what that baby's going to look like but um that's an opportunity to kind of show a reptile in its early sort of years in the game once we meet that baby um but it's all very much things to consider that are very interesting because yeah re reptiles dragons and you know they're different to humans they might not be born from the belly uh you know they might you not have a womb like us that's very it they're humanoid but they're also rep, reptile very uh, predominantly so it, it, it's kind of interesting to think of it from that perspective and having those differences between them and humans Silent treatment always works. Rose can just give her a look and let her keep digging her own hole. Yeah, that's kind of would work. Like Rose, Rose would just maybe have a sort of facial expression, a reaction, but because she can't say anything, Carol's got nothing to respond to. So Carol kind of goes off on a monologue sometimes. And uh, I can see Carol having a little bit of a monologue in this scene, an angry Sunday a monologue. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like get my brain rolling for what sort of thing she could say other than an insult to the reptile. 
toothless eye licker. Do they have no teeth though? I mean, or do they have spiky teeth? I've not, I don't even think I've still thought about that because all the assets that we have of the reptiles have got their mouths closed. Um, I imagine them having spiky teeth. Um, rat eater toothless, toothless eye licker. Rat eater. Who eats rats? I mean, Rose eats rats, doesn't she? I mean, she's she's probably ate rats to looking at her backstory she probably has because she she avoids having the blood of uh good people so she'd resort to rats um egg eater can be shouted at both humans and reptiles for different meanings of insulting yeah that's true. Egg eaters could be uh, like humans as well. Yeah, what would make them an egg sucker if there was? Does that mean they eat their own babies? I'm just I wondering now. I, I just love the sound of the word egg sucker. It's a great sounding word. But now I'm trying to think of the meaning behind it. So I might have completely missed that. Not even thought. Lizards have very sharp little teeth. Pointy. Yeah. It's a difficult one. I mean, thinking of something that goes something less is probably the easiest, but it doesn't necessarily have to be something um, that hairless or toothless or anything like that. Or, um, could be whatever we want it to be. I mean, having a word... One of those egg suckers, does that sound quite as powerful? Maybe not. If Carol's like, it's one of those egg suckers. I mean, egg suckers might not be the word we use. We've just got there, that there as a template right now, just so that there's something. But is it thinking about the law behind that word, like if we get went for egg suckers, why are they an egg sucker? And if we went for tongue licker, I mean eye licker, does that mean they actually lick eyes? Or is it just is it just Carol with her own fictional sort of beliefs about them? Um Oh, they have fangs, but not actual teeth. Yeah. When 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 you say toothless, I actually imagine somebody with not nothing in their mouth. <laughs> but I get it now. You meant just because they have fangs and not teeth, like a lizard with mouth ridges. Would Carol be worried about getting abraded? Her wood roughed up by scales. Maybe reptiles rub against stone and wood. Yeah. Thinking about like. Carol and why she dislike reptiles now is a really smart way to approach this part of the scene I think because we have the opportunity for her to go off on a monologue about them and why she you know so um yeah and thinking about it from a selfish perspective like Carol cares about herself and how would how would reptiles harm her and what have they harmed her in the past or tried to harm her? That's things that are interesting to consider about her life. Um, hmm. Um, some snakes can spit out their venom and others bite can melt or rot flesh, but for language they mostly rely on pheromones or vibration. They have rubber sharp teeth and they can dislocate their jaw to eat larger food and use. Ooh. Yeah, they can spit out venom. That's another one. Venom something. V uh, like a venom blank could be a good curse word. I just can't think of the second part that would work. Um... Um, egg sucker is a fine insult for a rept reptile to say to a human if Carol says it to a reptile. Maybe it's referring to how um, reptiles carry their eggs from necks 
at nest to nest. Yeah, I forgot who suggested egg sucker now, so I can't even ask um, what the potential law behind that could be. But I just loved the sound of it, and I thought it was very carol-like. But as for the meaning, yeah, it might. It's whether it works, isn't it? And it, you're right, it might fit more for an actual reptile to a human. Because they, the humans are the ones that would be harming their eggs at the end of the day. They like their eggs, right? <laughs> um, they care for their eggs. Okay. Uh, carry their eggs from nest to nest. Yeah, maybe it's referring to that, maybe. But it could be misleading. It could be misleading because on first read, it sounds like they eat their eggs. They consume their eggs. And... Obviously, the reptiles wouldn't do that to their own kin. They'd protect them, so. Um. Honestly, you may want to consider that there would be multiple subspecies of reptilian races, snake variations, lizard, as there are many options. They're mammals. Yeah, it's, I mean, we very, we restricted because of the assets we've got and they only kind of look one way so um yeah it's it, we it's whether we've even got the freedom to do that so you know and, and um i think egg chewer would work better for human snake would suck down an entire egg without biting it oh yeah that's true a any word egg anything that like sounds that is a description for eating something would work to go after egg for sure um but yeah egg chewer could work and snakes love bird eggs and other reptile eggs heck everything in the known universe likes to eat eggs some reptiles eat cacti yeah well it's let's just think of it from a perspective of like the reptile the dragon reptile we've got with the wings and that um i mean like you mentioned snakes and lizards but wouldn't it work as both i guess i guess snakes and lizards are different but i mean this is fictional so we can do what we want in a way but um are these reptiles cold-blooded well we did have um cold bloods as an insult funnily enough so um i they could be this is all very much up for consideration guys i mean uh, before today i just considered them as humans except they happen to be green and scaly <laughs> well not necessarily green but they happen to be scaly with wings but are humans but there's so much many differences they could actually have isn't there really and um, it'd, be, it'd be cool to look at reptile lore in other works of fiction as well as inspiration too and, and think how, how it's done that too um, but yeah cold bloods is a great word but would it I, I wasn't sure if it was aggressive enough for carol because the aggression of the egg sucker word just fits so good for carol but what else have we got we got snake faces eye lickers snake faces sounds like something a child would describe them as um eye lickers is a, a pretty cool one i think someone mentioned that they liked that one in chat So, how about we change it to eye lickers? Kimono dragons can rot their, their food for it to be easier to eat. Ooh. Interesting. So I want to I wanna watch reptile documentaries now. <laughs> um...
One sec, guys. I'm just making some notes of stuff that you guys have said. Okay, this is completely unrelated, but I just encountered a new fake word that made me laugh, and I think you'd like it. Exhaustipated. Have I pronounced that right? R right? Too tired to give a crap. Oh, is that fake? I'd actually believe that was real, you know. If you told me it was real, I probably would believe it was real. Exhaustipated. I like it. If they are cold-blooded, the whole cave system could be heated by hot underground hot springs interesting but if say if like if they're cold blooded and um yeah i I'm, i need to look read into how cold blooded people would live because it's completely a different different thing it's uh it's interesting um I've saved that as well though, National. Okay, um Exhausted packeted. I'm gonna steal that word at some point. <laughs> um right, so it's one of those eye lickers. We change it to eye lickers now then. Um because out of all the out of all the uh, curse words we've got that you guys have mentioned today, I mean, loads of they're all great. There's some really cool ones there, but some of them are more um, less hostile and more coming from someone who's not so much like Carol. Um, so I've, I've I've thought, yeah, I lick a sound very violent and aggressive so um you might fit for carol best out of that particular list discovery channel web has some good things on snake and snake do love their hot rocks yeah so yeah that i i'll look into it. i mean snakes reptiles do they uh, do they work the same guys because we got i want to be careful not to go too off track as well and uh, be turning them into snakes rather than dragon reptiles, which is what they are. Um, but now, now that Carol said I lick, because I'm thinking they must have a really long, thin tongue, and I'm imagining if they open their mouth, the tongue would come out and be super long. <laughs> it's interesting. And now I'm imagining some fan art in my mind of a reptile opening its mouth and a tongue coming out and licking Carol's eye out. That would be great. <laughs> Especially if she calls them eye lickers. It would be ironic. Um, reptiles don't rear their young. Re re lizards don't raise their young either. Well, this is interesting because, um, I mean, I've deleted the so we can't read back but we will be having a baby reptile in the cave i think chat really liked the idea of having a cute baby reptile in the game introduced and that opportunity would um give us a chance to learn about how they are with their kin compared to humans um i saw it as an opportunity for us to see this to sympathize with the reptiles and actually um le learn about them in a way that makes us realize they're not all that bad so you know it, it, i don't it would be sad if though if it went away where the reptiles weren't because I kind of want them to have a bit of sympathy to them, the reptiles. I don't don't want them to be an all-out evil res because then the whole choice of um, of lizards helping the lizards or going against the humans and all that—it's not gonna really be something people 
are going to be inclined to want to do if the reptiles are all out evil so yeah um it's it'd be interesting to learn about um things and yeah i mean at the end of the day it's cool thinking of reptile law and bringing that in but these guys are humanoid as well they're not like a complete animal so they might have ways that the human too um that are still part of the way they live their lives it's kind can kind of be a mix of the two but we don't want them to be a complete 100 percent reptile where we just cannot relate to them in any single way either they, they still speak like humans they look like humans and um as well we can't forget that okay long tongue like a giraffe yeah i want to look at some giraffe long tongues now let's uh giraffe long tongues <laughs> i want to get a vision in my mind for what this tongue is gonna look like especially if we're gonna go with this tongue liquor insult guys which i'm kind of attached to now at this point because <laughs> i'm attached to it now we could oh my god because it's um bringing up really cool visions in my mind about the reptiles and it could be a way that they you know aggressively attack people that cross them who knows but yeah like giraffes <laughs> they'd be tongue lickers Imagine if some point Carol or one of the other barrels carries around an egg in her like she's an incubator. Oh my goodness me, that's pretty cool. And uh, alligators take care of their kids a bit, reptile could, people could be like that. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. I don't want them to be so like cold-blooded literally that we just think, ah, oh, these reptiles suck. I want them dead. Like, I want us to like actually appreciate the reptiles and um because we we have like had little discussions about the end of episode one how it's all gonna end and one route would be have the humans live in like fall and the others would be the reptiles take over and live in like fall and the humans are, are made to live in the cave and rot in there and um, you know <laughs> just you know there's there's different options there's like a kind of side with the human side with the reptiles thing so we want to at least make them look like or don't we um and geckos and some of us stay in a group all their lives yeah there's so many different um reptile groups isn't there and some of them are gonna differ and uh yeah we'll have to just decide which ones this, our reptiles are gonna be similar to I saw a picture of a deer, deer licking its eye a bit ago. Yeah? I want to see it. And the giraffe has leather-like tongues, can use their tail as whips. Yeah. So I, I think we should do, we should make that thing. Our reptiles have uh, long tongues. <laughs> Just because I want to see Carol get her eye licked out by a reptile now. um okay so it's one of those eye lickers so that would be her initial reaction to seeing the painting um now if uh, it was the option where we didn't have the full color paint brushes and palettes carol might say something like Yeah, she'd, 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 uh, yeah, I'm just thinking now. She definitely needs to say something else, I think, because it's not going to just end there. She's going to say something, but I'm, I'm doing a blank on how it all could all conclude and um, be wrapped up. But... Ultimately, they have to return to Lakeville to find out information on the reptile. That's kind of um, how the quest is going to end. And, of course, there's other things to consider. Like, well, Rose is in the party and uh, 
the people of Lake Fall are scared of Rose, so how are we going to hide her? Is she going to hide in Carol? Are we going to put her in a in a somebody's? Uh, are we going to just walk in brazenly and not care with Rose? I think having that option could be interesting too for when we go back there. But that's something we'll consider afterwards when we get to the front of Lakefall. Um, in this actual scene now, it's all going to just be Carol's reaction to the reptile and uh, her basically being like, okay, we, we go back to the village and we'll we're asking people about this eye liquor. Like, it would be Carol that would demand that, I'd say. Obviously, Rose can't demand it because she doesn't speak. And the hero can't because, well, he don't really care enough. <laughs> Carol's just forcing him on this journey right now. Um, scale head. Scale, well, they've got scaly bodies too, I guess, too. But we'll get, we'll get that one in. Scale head, scale skin. Scale faces is another. I saw snake faces, but then I thought scale face. Smooth brow. Smooth brow, what's the context of that one? As in an eyebrow? Yeah, they don't have like hairy eyebrows, do they? They've got, um, they have a brow shape, but not, there's no hair there. It's like an empty space. Um, I'm hungry. I'm hungry and ready for my dinner. forehead and eye shape yeah interesting we got lies and I, I like adding them all to the list because in all honesty there's going to be so many NPCs so many different factions so many different kinds of folk on this journey um, and certain words are definitely going to be ones that certain people use over others but yeah, I feel like I lick as carols now. And I was going to put up a poll for this, but it feels like, in all honesty, I lick as the clear winner anyway. The others, the others that I put the carol icon next to are decent, but might suit others more. Like the snake face is could suit a younger, childlike person more. Um, an egg suck, as we said, maybe that might be better for humans. So, eye lickers is just sort of... There's so much good imagery with the eye lickers. It, it makes their tongue become a weapon. And that's quite interesting, too. Um, and it's just a great sounding word. My character won't use any words. Yeah, exactly, Van. Your character is 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 different, and every character's different. Every, some words never in a million years would they come out of people's mouths. Um, but you know, there'll be certain types that will love saying these words. <laughs> um, the main thing is that we can't. I like to like be very purposeful about this and not just pick a random word for anyone to say. I like to make sure that different races, different characters, different factions will all have their own set of insults and words that they'll use because it just makes them more distinct from each other rather than merge them all together and then they, they don't have their own voice enough and everybody sounds the same and yeah, it becomes a bit of a mess, a mishmash of a mess then. So I think it's a cool thing to to consider that. Um, their, their peeled skins can be sold for many too. Ooh, peeled skins or scales. See, this is all cool as well because we're going to have an item stream eventually. Um, I think the item stream's probably not going to be until with um, 
like tied up all the loose ends that we've already got though um so it might not be till the fall um but when we do have an item script stream we'll be we'll be thinking about things like that like what body parts and skin and all that will fall off these enemies and so that for loot basically and crafting materials so it's all pretty interesting stuff to consider got any room to call one a reptile a call out to the famous reptile and reptile bar from a certain 90s cartoon rugrats i know right as long as i don't get sued by uh, nickelodeon was it nickelodeon that did that I mean, I, I don't, I'm not 100% like knowledgeable about things like copyrights. So I, I just get scared about that. Some, some big corporation being like, you mentioned my, um, you mentioned my creation. You take that out of your game right now. <laughs> Otherwise, if there wasn't any restrictions on that, I'd be doing it all the time. You know, so, um, and, um, um, I was visualising them licking their own eyes to keep them moist since they have no tear ducts. Licking their own eyes to keep them moist? Oh my god, that's, that is nightmare fuel. Very, <laughs> very interesting. Yeah, it's not going to be fun. It's going to be fun to see how lively the world will be. Will be, for sure. Reptar is almost 100% going to be trademarked since I'd see for a while. Yeah, and honestly, guys, that, I, I love... I would love to reference things more, but because of things like that, sometimes we can't, you know, so it's a shame. It's a shame that it's, it copyright exists, but it's one of those things. And, um, well, yeah, it seems like it would be because it's Rugrats, you know, it's such a big thing. It's a different language. It's good okay it also means a creep oh what 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 means creep reptile <laughs> okay uh right guys so we are coming closing towards the end sad as i am to say i'm not got finishing yet though i just want to make sure we've got everything 100 percent clear before we finish um yeah i'm gonna have a think about really have a think about carol potentially having an angry monologue at this point like all we've got so far is this this line um but i think we could go further we could push this slightly further and just show show carol being a sunday you know she's a she's an angry lady um carol is and now no, is an opportunity to get out. and it's a challenge for me because i I'm, I'm not, I'm the opposite of a Zendaya, so <laughs> I'm having to get into another voice of a character that I'm very different to, but it's a lot of fun. She, it's a lot of fun, but I'll have to think about it, and then maybe by Friday stream, I'll have more of an idea, and we can share those ideas, and we will 100% get this scene done and dusted. I'm going to kind of be working on the battle stuff off stream for the time being because it's very technical at the moment the stuff i'm trying to do a couple of troubleshooting things um and um i'm not sure what we'll do friday but we'll see where i am we'll see where i am guys um reptile yeah oh does it that's interesting now i'm imagining a reptile embarrassed about licking her eyes and wearing something like a beer hat but for squirting moisturizer into their eyes oh my god let me read that again i'm imagining a reptile embarrassed about licking her eyes and wearing something like a beer hat but for squirting moisture into their eyes i, I want to see drawings of all these rant crazy ideas <laughs> we've got a fan art channel now in our discord guys and honestly even if it if you're not amazing at art it's, it's still really cool like this made my day and you know it's it's just something chub probably did in very quickly <laughs> but it's so funny so you know if you ever want to do it guys just so you know it's there because that's a new channel a lot of people don't know we've got that one yet oh welcome to our discord appreciate 
say joining. If anyone else wants to join, feel free to hop on in. Um, okay, folks. So I'm going to send us over to somebody. I think we should do that. But thanks for the chats. More of a chatty stream today, but um, that's what the streams are for. I don't. I've I've got to the stage of not seeing streams as a ta as a thing where we actually do loads of work or anything like that. I like to chat and brainstorm and talk, get all thoughts out, use it as an opportunity for that. Because at the end of the day, if I if I was making this game all on my own off stream, um things would be so different because i wouldn't get the chance we wouldn't get the chance to get together and share all these really cool thoughts so i really feel like it's this is what the streams are for doing that um and that is ultimately why i only stream three days a week instead of seven so i can spend the other four days doing the actual stuff like properly and getting into that because mode and what will we be doing next time? Yeah, it's up in the air at the moment. It'll either be finishing the scene that we that we're working on, or going back to the battle system. Um, I mean, yeah, the bo the boss battle, or it might be something completely different. Don't know. Yeah, we'll see, guys. So, but the main thing is we gotta. The goal is to get this scene done so I can make the next story so far video. I'd really like to make the next story so far video before the month ends, but it might be the start of next month, we'll have to see. Hi Rex, how you doing? So fun today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks for all the reptile chats. So some really cool reptile chats, guys. <laughs> I like it. So fun today. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. So we're gonna see who's online. Um have a little peek. So, exclamation mark, Ray, guys, if you want to come along, that would be wonderful. Okay, so. Gretch stars on. She is playing Final Fantasy Nine today. So, um, which is actually as, as Salk is playing Final Fantasy Nine at the moment. So, it only feels right. Okay. So, I'll see you all on Friday, guys. Thanks for hanging out and for the awesome welcome stream back. Um, really had the best time. Take care, everyone.